good morning, good afternoon, or evening, wherever you are, whenever time of day it is. Welcome. Today's class is going to be a bit of a dynamic flow. And what that means is I have incorporated poses that are balance challenging maybe or uh, invigorating your balance while using those balancing muscles and skills to move through your practice um, a little more fluidly. So if you're feeling like your balance is off today, don't worry about it. Maybe this can help strengthen some of those smaller muscle groups. If you're feeling super stable and balanced, then maybe enjoy this, have some fun, take it deeper. Wherever you are, just be gentle with yourself in the process. And yeah, let's go ahead and get started. As always, come into an easy pose. You can have legs crossed or sitting on your shins or laying down if that's what you crave today. Wherever you are, begin to close the eyes or soften the gaze. As you breathe in through the nose and out through the mouth. Take a few deep breaths here. As you ground yourself in your body. And bringing your attention down to your toes, we will begin to perform a body scan. And just beginning to notice any sensations that you may have across the toes or the feet. And without labels or judgment, just notice those sensations as they are. Not good, not bad, just notice where you are today in this moment in your body. Bringing your attention higher, begin to notice any sensations across the legs. Maybe noticing which way the legs are stacked, left on right or right on left. Noticing the temperature of the room and noticing how your clothes feel against your skin. Anything, any sensation that grounds you in this present moment. Bringing your attention higher, begin to notice any sensations in your core. Noticing how the air fills your belly, chest, and throat. Maybe noticing your posture without overcorrecting. And again, just being present as you scan through your body for sensations without labels or judgment. From here, <clears throat> bring your attention to your shoulders. Relaxing the shoulders away from the ears, creating space for the neck. The arms hang heavy by your side as you scan through 
your fingers, hands, and arms for any sensations that may come up. And finally, bringing your attention to your head, relax the muscles around the eyes, ears, and mouth, melting any facial expression away from the surface of your skin. There is no need to smile or frown in your meditation. Lengthening from the crown of your head, just to make you a few centimeters taller. I invite you to imagine your breath like a wave, drawing a line with your mind's eye as you inhale, the wave comes up, and exhale, the wave goes down. I'm following this rhythm to keep you focused and centered on your breathing. And if at any point you become distracted by noises outside, to-do lists, tomorrow, anything that could possibly take your attention away from this moment, kindly bring your focus back to your breathing and drawing that line with your mind's eye as you follow your breath. At this point, we would like to set an intention for today's practice, be it a quote, word, affirmation, prayer, picture, color, number, or symbol, anything that brings you meaning in this moment. You can say that to yourself. You can picture it in your mind's eye. And you can exhale. Let it go out into the room around you. And at this point, if you are sitting on a block or blanket, I kindly ask you to move those things aside. And staying grounded today, we want to keep our sit bones anchored, lengthening from the crown of our head. Begin to look up as you open up, inhale, stretching across the neck. Exhale, round the head down. Taking your time here, there is absolutely no rush. And if you find any sensations, sweet spot, somewhere that you could stay and be for just a few moments, pause. Give yourself a couple breaths as you open up and create space across the throat and neck. Reverse, going in the opposite direction. Taking your time. Inhale back through center. Beautiful. From here, we're going to lengthen through the sides of the body. So watch out for water bottles, any furniture that may be near, just leave plenty of space beside you. Again, staying grounded through the sit bones. We're going to reach out with the right arm as we lengthen up and over, stretching the left side of the body. Inhale through center. Exhale. Reach with the right arm. And again, staying anchored through the sit bone. So we're not rocking up to one side. We really want to stay grounded here as we lengthen all through the ribs, down into the side body oblique. Inhale through center, exhale. Bow.
big deep breath as you begin to move today. Maybe feel the inspiration to bow a little forwards or open up a little backwards. That's okay. Following that intuition, wherever the craving comes from, wherever it goes, you know your body best. And inhale through center. Beautiful. From here, we'll make our way to a tabletop position. Coming on to hands and knees. Take that extra moment to check in with your foundation. Shoulders stacked on top of wrists. Hips stacked on top of knees. And when you're ready, feeling good, feeling strong, drop the belly as you open the heart. Look up. Squeezing the shoulders together as if you could isometrically rotate and open the heart more. Exhale, begin to round the spine towards the sky. As you push your back up, tuck the tailbone under. Moving as fast or slow as you crave in your cat cow today, you can take one breath in each position, or if you want to slow it down, take a few breaths. Again, it's all about listening to the cravings, listening to your intuition, what feels good and best for you. If you also feel the cravings, just wiggle a little left. We'll move a little to the right. You can also let yourself take a bit of a three form here as well. Just checking in with the spine and what feels good. From here, we'll make our way to child's pose. So big toes to touch, knees mat with distance as we straighten the arms, lengthen across the mat. And from here, Make an active child's pose, so we're not just kind of hanging out, laying on the floor. We want an active stretch as we reach towards the top of the mat, pressing the forehead into the mat beneath us. Big, deep breaths into the belly using the diaphragm. Inhale, make your way up. Beautiful. In your tabletop position, take a moment to reset. From here, I'm going to go through just a little bit of conditioning. It's nothing body transformational. The only reason I add it is because I firmly believe that when you add a little bit of conditioning, bring that mind to muscle connection, you can better use the stronger, larger muscle groups to benefit your practice. So with that in mind, it's not going to be something too intense. So give it what you got. It's only going to be for a few moments. Back in a tabletop position, we'll make our way to a comfortable pose here. And when you're ready, we're going to rotate the right knee clockwise. So out to the side and up and around. <clears throat> Excuse me. And when you're guiding that right knee around in circles, lift it up and down. Keep breathing, keep moving. Eyes are somewhere between your hands or looking at the top of the mat for a nice long neck. I'm just guiding that right knee in circles. Warming up the muscle groups, getting things going. Beautiful. From here, we're going to pulse it out and bring that right knee up. 
a 90 degree angle with the right leg and pulse for 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Beautiful. <sighs> Child's pose, just for a little mini moment to reground. You can bring your hands by your side if that feels good. Then when you're ready, <clears throat> make your way up and we'll get the other side. I'll clear my throat just a moment. <clears throat> Ooh, good morning for me. So, from here, left side, we're going to rotate counterclockwise. So bringing the left knee up, back around. Just drawing circles with that left knee. Core is strong. Breathing is steady and slow. Eyes are focused between your hands or somewhere at the top of the mat. When you're ready, lift that left knee up and pulse for 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Ooh, very good. Sit back for a moment, maybe bring hands to fists and tap it out. When you're ready, cross the feet beneath the seat and we'll make our way onto our back. When you're on the mat, take a moment to activate throughout your core. So before you lift a finger, engaging through the abdominals. So tuck the tailbone under to eliminate any arch you may have. When the back is flat against the mat, you can start to feel that engagement across the lower abdominals. From here, we're going to knit the top ribs, or excuse me, the bottom ribs together, imagining like it's a blanket and you can just bring your ribs closer together and then everything just locks into place and you've got your core engagement before you lift a finger from here hands come behind the head just for support the neck is not doing any work and we'll lift one leg and then the other bringing big toes to touch knees out wide we'll come into like a crab crunch i guess you could call this and come to tap knees to elbows and extend out Keep breathing, keep moving, do the best you can. Toes can be as high or as low as you feel comfortable. We'll go for 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, Three, two, and one. Woo. Hands to knees, circle the knees as you massage the lower back against the mat. <sighs> Hands can come behind the thighs as you rock yourself up. Once at the top of the mat, cross the feet beneath your seat. And we'll step back to a plank. Just keep your nose real close. Once in plank pose, pause for a moment. Still feeling the activation in your core. Kind of wiggle it out. I think that feels nice. And then when you're ready, sit the hips up towards the sky as you sit back to a down dog. I like to use blocks under my hands in my down dog, but that's totally optional. <sighs> Wherever you are, take a few deep breaths as you settle in. 
shifting the weight back and forth. You can walk the legs. Nod the head yes and no. Big deep breaths. Stay grounded in your body. Beautiful. From here, inhale, look up towards the top of the mat. Exhale, step, walk, or jump to a forward fold. Let everything hang heavy in your forward fold. Knees can be soft. Having a little micro bend is a good thing. Letting the head hang heavy. Arms can grab opposite elbows. Maybe even come grabbing hands behind the head. Whatever feels good. Here. Lots of the yoga practice incorporates a balance of effort and ease and using the dynamics of the muscles to work with gravity, not against it. And you can really feel that with forward fold, letting yourself just hang heavy. And just by simply balancing on your two feet in the forward fold, you can feel that gravity is helping you here. And that's kind of the sensation that can come from every pose in time and with practice. On an inhale, slow and controlled, begin to make your way to stand. Taking your time, head is the last thing to come up. Once in your standing pose, just take a moment in your mountain pose Grounding down into the feet at the top of the mat. As you lift up all 10 toes, place them down one at a time. Really anchoring through all the muscles of your feet. With that engagement, you can feel it through the quadriceps, the glutes, the core. Heart is open as you squeeze the shoulders together. Palms open in front of you. Lengthening through the crown of the head. This is your mountain pose. This is a very important pose in yoga because there's a lot of alignment cues here that are there to benefit you. With eyes closed or soft gaze, checking in with your breath at the top of your mat. Take a moment to breathe. Just like your meditation, maybe have a little moment for a body scan just noticing any sensations and without judgment, just notice where you are today in this moment. From here, we'll go through two sun salutations, moving as fast or as slow as you wish. Samaskara A. So when you're ready, we'll inhale, look up, reach up. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, half lift. Flat back, squeeze the shoulders together. Exhale, hands to the mat as you step, walk, or jump to the back of the mat plank. Drop the knees, follow me, drop the chest, tricep push up, slow and controlled chin. Inhale, tiny lift up as you look up, open up. And with an exhale, sit back to a down dog. Five breaths here. On an inhale, look up to the top of the mat. Exhale, step, walk, or jump. Forward fold. Inhale, slow and controlled. Make your way to stand. As you look up, reach up, open up. Exhale, forward fold. 
inhale, half lift, flat back, squeeze those shoulders together, go for that 90 degrees here, exhale, hands to the mat as you shift the weight into the hands, pop the legs back for plank, drop the knees, then the chest, then the chin, inhale, tiny lift up, look up, open up, exhale, sit back to your down dog pose. Body begins to warm up, and down dog may begin to feel a little more comfortable as time passes. The hamstrings open up, and we get comfortable with the head rush that is hips being over the head. Wherever you are, just take a few more breaths here. Inhale, look up to the top of the mat. Exhale, step block or jump to forward fold. Inhale, tiny lift up as you can just stand slow and controlled. From here, I'll face the camera. You can be wherever you are, that feels good. We'll make our way to a tree pose. So I'll show you a few different angles, but to begin in your tree pose, just begin to shift the weight to your left leg. And when you do so, the right leg just begins to hang. You can bring the right foot to the ankle, to the calf, or to the inner thigh. Never on the knee. So you can pick ankle, calf, or thigh. Wherever you are, keep in mind that tree pose is also a hip opener. So you don't want your leg out here in your tree pose. You want to actively open up that hip to get the beautiful stretch across the front side of the hip. From here, hands can be on your waist at prayer or you can grow the arms out long like branches. Squeezing the glutes as you shift the weight, standing strong and stable. Your left leg is locked and beautiful, so you can be tall, strong, and stable. Lengthening from the crown of the head. Eyes are focused on one thing and one thing only. If the eyes are moving around the room, your balance will be unsteady. So just find a picture, a light switch, um, a doorknob, whatever you can see that will keep you stable. From here, we're going to keep our standing leg strong as we shift our right leg in front. You can take the right knee with the right hand, or if you have the flexibility, you can take the right foot to the right hand, or if you have like a strap, you can do that. So there's options depending on your flexibility, maybe a sweatshirt even, you can hold yourself here. Soft bend in the left knee if you need it. So you begin to open that leg out if that feels good. And bring it back in. From here, we're going to release the strap, find whatever hold you have, and still standing strong on the left leg, begin to kick that right leg out. And from here, dropping the right arm in front of the left foot. If you have a block, that's great. If your hand reaches the floor, that's also great. Wherever you are, you've got right hand on the mat, left foot standing strong, and begin to twist left arm to the sky. For three, for two, and slow and control come out of the twist. From here, slow and control, drop that right foot to the mat, Whew, coming to your high lunge. Arms can be overhead, hands on the waist, or at prayer. From here, feeling the beauty and the strength in your lunge, a little bit of a hip opener, core is strong and long, so we're not arching the back too much, we want to stay nice and tall. To transition, we're just going to drop the 
right heel as we open up the hips. <laughs> Catch a wall if you need to. <sighs> Balancing into your warrior two. Remember, warrior two is a hip opener. Squeeze those glutes together, opening up across the front side of the body. Arms to a T, plug those shoulders in, looking past your left fingertips. Take a deep breath, building the strength, feeling strong, long, powerful. Warrior two is more about strength than balance, so you can use this time to recuperate from the balancing postures. From here, inhale, arms up overhead as you straighten both feet, toes now facing the same direction. Lengthening from the crown of the head, begin to bow into your forward fold. Shifting the weight into the toes, so you're not sitting too much into the heels. You want to, again, distribute the weight evenly through the feet. And for me, that kind of creates this feeling like I'm going too far over. But in reality, if I were to look in a mirror, my hips would still be stacked over my, or aligned over my feet. So play with that balance and that sensation if you walk a little forwards or maybe a little backwards to get that beautiful hamstring stretch. And then from here, when everything feels good and strong, we'll halfway lift and opening the left toes out again. So now we've got a foundation for a triangle pose. Actually, don't half lift, just come all the way up. Opening the toes on the left, open. You've got your right toes still facing the same direction as your head. Arms out to a T. Stretch, lengthening the left arm forward as you rotate at the hips, coming into your triangle pose. A block is great here. If you have one, you can rest the fingertips on a block or just gently rest the hand on the leg. But the core is holding you here, so wherever you are, my legs are actually really tight today, so I'm going to use two blocks. The goal is to feel the stretch, front side of the left right leg and inside of the left thigh. Arms to a T, big deep breath. So earlier we stopped in reverse. Uh, half moon pose, or revolve, excuse me. Now we're going to just go in traditional half moon pose. So still using our left leg as our standing leg. We're gonna soften that left knee as we shift the weight back into the left leg. I have a block here, but you can go to the floor or whatever prop feels good. Right leg in the air. Arms again to a T. Heart is open. Balancing here for three, for two, and one. Both hands slowly come frame the left foot. Standing splits if that's available. And then slow and control. Woo! Drop that right foot to the mat. Hands frame the left foot as you push into the hand. Just, just enough to bring the feet to meet. And sit the hips high for down dog pose. Mindful of the body and the muscles. Maybe feeling a difference between the left and right leg at this point in time. Take a deep breath here. Inhale as you look to the top of the mat. Slip walk or jump. Forward fold. Inhale, make your way to stand. Beautiful. If you want some water, have some. And then we'll get ready for the opposite side. So, everything was kind of through the left leg, you may have noticed. Now we gotta get the right leg. Shifting the weight into your right standing leg, you begin to notice that the left leg just begins to kind of hover. And keep in mind in your tree pose, 
We're not sitting into that hip and pushing it out. If you would imagine my skeleton, you would see this C shape, <laughs> if you will. So really engage through the glute, lift through the thigh and core as you find your tree pose on the right side. So if you need a wall or something, hold yourself steady, arms can move by your side, hips, prayer, or overhead. And do your best here to open from that left hip. There is a hip opener. So if you look from the side profile, it does look like my leg disappears behind me. It's not far in front of me. It's not twisted. You want to keep that nice long plane. Strong and stable in your right leg. It's okay if you wiggle or move. Trees move when the wind blows. That doesn't mean they fall over. And if they do, we can pop right back up. So from here, still staying stable and strong, shift the left leg in front of you. And again, you can grab the strap if you want, close by, or just taking the left knee to the left hand. You've got options here. I will, holding the left leg up, find what works for you, wherever your flexibility is today. For me, it's on the knee. You can begin to open that leg out to the side, again, playing with the range of the hip. And if you wiggle, that's okay. From here, we will begin to rotate, kicking the left leg back as we bring the heart down, making our way to a T. Begin to find your revolved half moon pose on the opposite side. So that means the left hand comes to the mat, adjacent to the right foot. Begin to rotate the arms to a T. Lifting from that left glute for three, Or two. Last breath. Slow and control. Drop that left foot as you make your way to high lunge. Find some stability in your high lunge. Big deep breaths. Hands at waist, prayer, or overhead. Transitioning here to your warrior two, we're just going to drop the left foot to the mat. As we open up the hips, squeeze the glutes together, squeeze the shoulders together, arms come out to a T, warrior two. Big deep breaths, looking past your right fingertips. From here, begin to straighten the legs. I'll come by side profile this time. So out of your warrior two, we're just bringing the toes same direction as the eyes. Begin to bow into your wide leg forward fold. So as I mentioned before, you may be bringing the hips way past the feet. If you can stack the hips above the feet, that really transforms the stretch. And if you have blocks, that's great. If you if your head reaches the mat, that's also great. But if it doesn't, that's okay. You can bring the head to the blocks and that creates the same sensation. But really play with that feeling as if you walk your hands forward, the hips become more in line over the feet and that can really transform the hamstring stretch. <sighs> Slow and control, make your way back up. We're going into the right triangle pose now. So feet are about, I don't know, a yard, a meter apart. Right toes pointing out, left toes pointing straight, arms out to a T. Again, blocks close by if you may need them. 
reaching the fingers forward, hinging at the hips, and rotate the arms. Again, the core is holding you here, so you're not resting into that bottom leg. Core holds you, but if you do have vulnerability in that front leg, maybe blocks are a nice thing to just keep you in line. But at maximum, I would only suggest like 10%, 5% of your weight in this right arm. The legs are strong and locked, lifting the kneecaps, coming up through the hips and the core. Coming to your traditional half moon pose, so no revolving here. We're going to shift the weight into the right leg. If you got a block, that's great. Right Ooh, hand covers maybe about 10 inches ahead of the right foot, lifting through the left glute. Arms to a T. Beautiful deep breaths here. Balance and strength. When you're ready, slow and controlled. Frame the right foot with the hands. Coming into standing splits, lift that glute up. And slow and controlled, drop the left foot. Pushing into the hands, you can bring the feet to meet and sit back into your down dog pose. Exhale, drop the knees to the mat and sit back. Wonderful. That was a lot, but I think it was fun. So I hope you enjoyed. So all of that dynamic stretching and balancing really takes it out on the hips. So this point of the practice is going to be slower for stretches to maybe undo a little bit of tension that might have been created because I know I get that sometimes, like where the femur goes into the hip, totally like tightens up after these kinds of flows. So the next few poses are designed to um, reverse some of that intensity that we've created. If you have a blanket, that's great. Something soft for the knees might be nice. Wherever you are, we're going to bring our hands to the top of the mat, stepping out long to a plank. We're going to bring the left knee behind the left hand, left foot behind the right hand, as we sit back into our pigeon pose. Pigeon pose can be done just sitting up tall like this, but if you wanna go a little more relaxed or kind of get into it, you can come down onto your forearms, maybe using blocks, find what works for you here. Take deep breaths. Slow down the breathing. Tell the heart it no longer has to work so hard. All of that intensity, all of that accelerated heart rate can now pass as we slow down our breathing and tell our body that we don't need that intensity anymore. We don't need all of that blood pumping. We can just begin to decompress and enjoy the slower, deeper benefit of our practice. few more breaths here, just really enjoying every savory moment that we can. Maybe going deeper than you could before as you just settle in, coming all the way down to the mat. And adjusting too, so those micro adjustments as you listen to your body, knowing what feels good, feels weird, feels different. If there's no sharpshooting pain, then I do invite you to make the micro adjustments to explore what is available in your body. So if you crawl a little left, maybe, or crawl a little right, you can find things that maybe weren't available at first. Coming all the way back up, we're going to shift our weight onto our left hip, bringing the right leg around, extending both feet out, you can tap it out. 
Ooh, a little bit of a rebound here. And then for the opposite pigeon pose, you can bring the right knee to the right side of the mat, right foot to the left side of the mat, and then just bring the left leg behind you. Wow, and I just noticed that my right side was completely different than my left, and that's okay. Sometimes the body is not always equal, and when we practice our yoga, that gives us the opportunity to observe that. Wherever you are on your right side pigeon, just give yourself time to take a few deep breaths and settle in. Again, if it's practicing a body scan or if it is just imagining your breath coming into your body, deep into the belly, chest, and throat, out of the throat, chest, and belly. Anything that keeps you present in this moment, avoiding the wandering mind that is what I have to do later today, or what happened yesterday, or oh my god, I need to vacuum. All of those thoughts can wait. For now, in your practice, be with your breath. Beautiful deep breath. Wherever you are in your pigeon pose, begin to walk yourself up. And again, shifting the weight on the right leg, the left leg comes out in front. And shake it out. If you liked that, you can continue. If that felt really good, maybe you can go deeper. We're going to go into double pigeon. And if you're like, whoa, 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 that was like the most intensity I've ever felt in my life, I'll give you an option. So if you really don't want to go deeper than that, you can come onto your back, stacking the right leg on top of the left knee. So right ankle is on your left knee. You can reach through grabbing the left knee, and that's going to create a beautiful stretch in your right hip. And same for the opposite side. But if you do want to go deeper, and I invite you to, we're going to go into double pigeon, um, excuse me, shoelace. This is called shoelace. And essentially that's bringing the left foot to the outside of the right hip. So just crossing your left leg under and then bringing the right leg on top. You're going to bring the knees stacked, feet are by your side and starting to feel that beautiful intensity around the hips and the lower back. Again, blocks are great here or if you have pillows or Maybe even like a BOSU ball, like one of those big inflatable balls that could be kind of nice to just like hang out here if there was a ball here. Um, wherever you are, you can just kind of begin to fold forward. As time passes, you may find you can go deeper. Whatever feels good, this can definitely um, help with that standing intensity that is tree poses and warrior twos and all of those dynamic um, when it gets tight in the hips what are the words <laughs> so yeah wherever you are just begin to take a few deep breaths and as time passes you may find you can go deeper Wherever you are, find those micro adjustments, maybe a little walk to the left or a little movement to the right. 
and explore where this intensity can move from all of those nooks and crannies that you can open up. And inhale, make your way up. Exhale, sit back on the hips and release the feet. If you're on your back, you can just lay out long and tall and switch the feet whenever you're ready. So that time we had right on left, this time we're doing left on right. So bringing the right foot to your left hip or to the outside of the left hip, stacking the right knee on top of left knee stacked on top of right, hips and feet all in the same line as best as you can. A few little wiggles to get there. And then when you're ready, whatever is available, it might feel completely different on this side. So just give yourself time slowly and begin to bow forward. It's not necessary to have blocks, but maybe pillows can work or if you're at home, a big stack of books, whatever is available to you. It doesn't have to look like, you know, the yoga practice with all of the yoga accessories. It's just something of the same size and quality so you can put your weight on it maybe or give you that same few inches off the ground to help you in your practice. It can be I literally have a dictionary that's the same size as this book, so it can be anything as long as you feel stable and comfortable moving with it. your last big deep breath here. Inhale, make your way up. And from here, rocking back onto the hips. From here, we'll go into a quick quad stretch. So coming out long on the mat, we'll go for a double quad stretch. If that's available to you, if not, you can just take your time one at a time, but bringing the left foot next to the left hip, then again, well, actually, I'll do it this way. From tabletop, you can drop the hips between the feet. That might be a bit better, and work your way back. And just take a moment here in a quad stretch to also open up across the front side of the body. I know it's super intense. We're only gonna be here for about a minute or less. So just let yourself wiggle, move, squeeze, push, pull, any sensation that kind of comes up. You can explore that feeling. Taking a few deep breaths and releasing with every exhale the tension that could be across the quads, maybe across the hips, or opening up across the heart. And then when you're ready, ooh, begin to work your way up and bring the feet out beneath you. We'll make our way to a final Shavasana. So if you have a blanket, that's great for your Shavasana, maybe a pillow, um, sweater, socks, anything that's gonna help you be more comfortable in your Shavasana. I am a huge 
fan of the pillow and blanket, but I don't have a pillow right now. So wherever you are, maybe turn off the lights, close the windows, close the blinds, and make your way down onto the mat. If you've got your hair up, you can take that down too. And just allow yourself to come all the way down to the mat eyes closed or soft gaze as we perform one last body scan to melt into our final pose. Put the arms and legs out wide by your side, knowing you can take up as much space as you possibly crave. <sighs> Exhale, release any tension that may be lingering. Bringing your attention down to your toes, noticing how the feet fall open naturally, relaxing the toes, feet. You can let your legs be heavy, the knees are soft, the hips melt into the mat beneath you, the belly moves naturally, knowing there's no need to control or manipulate your breathing. The air flows in and out as it should without control or manipulation. The heart is open and the arms are out wide by your side, squeezing your shoulders together just a bit to bring your shoulders down to the ground and the arms out wide by your side. The fingers and hands are relaxed, knowing there's nothing you need to hold or squeeze in today's practice. All of that work is behind you. And finally, bringing your attention to your head, relaxing the muscles around the eyes, ears, and mouth. There's no need to smile or frown in your Shavasana. Your eyes are focused on the darkness behind your eyelids, the space that only you know, the place that only you can go. Imagine yourself like a stone at the bottom of a river, steady, still, and unmoving. Your thoughts are the water constantly moving and rushing along. It is not your job to stop the water from moving. It is not your job to stop your thoughts from thinking. Simply be still as the river moves. As long as you are alive, your brain will think. And as long as the river flows, the water will move. not intended to fall asleep in the Shavasana, but if that's what your body craves, then so be it. But I challenge you to practice being between sleep and awake. Completely relaxed and surrendered into the mat. But still mindful as you are here, unmoving. Take a deep breath, begin to wiggle the fingers and toes as you awaken the body and come back into the room. And bring the arms up overhead for a good morning stretch. Waking up for the second time today, rolling to whichever side falls to you. And slow and controlled, begin to make your way to a seated pose, the same pose where we began today's practice. And with eyes closed or a soft gaze, I invite you to recall today's intention and take that with you throughout the rest of your day or the rest of your week. And inviting a sense of gratitude into yourself, your body, your mind, begin to be overwhelmed with gratitude for 
your physical body and everything it does and continues to do, conscious or unconscious. Gratitude for yourself for showing up today, taking an hour out of your day just to do something for you. And thank you so much for joining me in this practice. I really love sharing it with you. And if you have any comments, questions, or concerns, do not hesitate to let me know. I would love to help you more. Otherwise, have a great day. Stay hydrated, and I will see you later. Bye.